Indiana's new concealed weapon law has led to concerns about more senseless bloodshed in a state that already ranks among the worst in the nation. But on top of the threat of more gun violence, making concealed weapons legal will also take away one of the city's most successful crime fighting tools. And this special report, investigative reporter Mike Prosteen, looks at the violent crime reductions that could be reversed and the frightening cases that police may find themselves powerless to prevent. Corey Bozeman served decades in prison on two separate armed robbery convictions before a gun arrest last month led police to far more than that, enough to book him with additional charges involving cocaine, marijuana, felon with a firearm, and battery on an officer. This type of, of an arrest um, is critical to reducing crime in the community. In another part of town in February, officers say they spotted the distinctive outline of a concealed handgun when they stopped two men, Charlie Tenner and Donald Miller, and booked them with carrying three pistols and possession of marijuana packaged for sale, all within a school zone. Using this uh, concealed weapons uh, law is one added to in the arsenal to fight crime. In the 7th Ward, here at the intersection of Allen and North Dergenois, police say they spotted Dijon Bryant with the telltale bulge of a gun in his waistband. After a struggle, special operations officers got the gun, which gave them grounds to search and find this long list of other illegal items, marijuana, ecstasy, cocaine, and a potentially deadly amount of fentanyl. Bryant, a career criminal on parole after he already served one 10-year sentence for being a felon with a gun, is now facing that charge again on top of the nine other charges. None of the other charges would have evolved were it not for the police observing the suspect carrying a concealed weapon. Gun stops like these routinely lead to more serious charges involving drugs, stolen guns, and suspects wanted in more serious crimes. Let's not go backwards and gun violence. And this bill not only puts us going backwards, but also endangers every law enforcement officer out here because our, our knowing you're carrying does not give us just immediately the opportunity to, to check you out. Gun stops in New Orleans dropped dramatically in 2020 when the COVID pandemic hit and the NOPD dwindled to a record low number of officers. In mid-2022, the department restarted the proactive crime-fighting tactic, and it quickly paid off. You started to see, as a result, significant felony arrests made for repeat and violent felony offenders, and we saw violent crime go down. This analysis by the Metropolitan Crime Commission and its president, Rafael Goyaneci, shows how major violent crime, murders, shootings, armed robberies, and carjackings, began decreasing as gun stops increased. There's a correlation between proactive gun enforcement, which the police department started doing again in the summer of 2022, and the dramatic decreases in crime. The statistics for the past year show that the majority of gun arrests lead to suspects being booked with felonies. The tactic is simple. A concealed gun gives officers the grounds to stop a suspect for the misdemeanor charge of illegal carrying of a firearm. These low-level stops often reveal felonies like this suspect who is carrying a machine gun on Bourbon Street. On July 4th, that illegal carrying law will be wiped from the books. It's not okay. It was not thought through. District task forces have been disbanded. Traffic stops are rare. The major narcotics unit is a relic from the past. But the department has openly increased gun confiscations each of the past two years, from just over 2,000 in 2021 to nearly 3,000 last year. 2024 was on pace to top that, but most of those stops will no longer be allowed. Here's Chief Deputy Hans Gantier back in 2022 when he was commander of the 8th District. The guns on that table not only represent someone who was arrested for illegally carrying a firearm, but that arrest possibly prevented a potential shooting, a potential homicide. So what you're doing in essence is you're, you're handcuffing police officers in doing their job. Former NOPD commander Marlon DeFillo remembers when he was a young patrol officer making what at first seemed like a routine gun arrest. And I turned to my partner and I said, that guy on the corner has a gun because you could see the bulge in his, under his T-shirt. After a tense struggle with the suspect, 
DeFillo ended up making one of the most significant busts of his 32-year career. And we were able to subdue him and come to find out he was wanted for murder. Come July, whether the concealed gun is a pistol or an assault rifle, New Orleans police and their fellow officers and deputies throughout the state will be forced to look the other way. Mike Pearlstein, WWL, Louisiana.